Lily, I've been ruminating on the fact that modern medicine is really quite magical. Why's that, Bob? Well, just take my latest patient. 100 million year old Apatosaurus. No spring chicken, if you know what I mean. Yeah, okay. Naturally, her kidney function is practically non-existent. Uh-huh. Liver totally shot. Okay. And she's on all the meds. Huh? All the meds? W what does that even mean? Yes, literally all of them. Even the ones you can only buy in dark alleyways or under dimly lit bridges with crypto. Wait, Bob, are, are you serious? I, I don't think that's a good idea. And yet I can prescribe her meds just like I would for a 70 kilogram, 25 year old Caucasian human male. Bob? Like her volume of distribution Bob. and body fat composition should be completely different, but somehow it just works. Oh goodness, I feel like a wizard. Oh. Like Bob. Luke Skywalker from the Harry Potter series. <sighs> okay, I didn't want to be the one to do this, but... <sighs> I'm really sorry, Bob, but the other faculty and I, we've been meaning to talk to you about your prescribing habits. Whatever for? They're bad, Bob. Really bad. <laughs> no, Billy, that's just malarkey. No, Bob, we all dread covering for you because it takes forever to clean up after you. Carol is wondering how come you're not on some kind of list. Please, does Carol think that Bob is my real name? Robert, I'm being serious here. <gasps> how did you know my real name? Have you been going through my mail? Bob, focus! Here, I want you to take a look at the beer's criteria. Billy, I know it's malpractice to have beer before 5 p.m., which is why I only have hard liquor in the office. N no, Bob, it's named after a guy. You know what? Th th that doesn't matter. This is a guy that'll help you cut down on your inappropriate prescriptions for your older patients. Billy, this is absurd. Antipsychotics are listed here. So are you telling me that if I have a patient with dementia who's screaming like a banshee that I shouldn't be giving her haloperidol? Yes, a as a general rule of thumb, not giving haloperidol would be a good thing. It can't be. Bob, it's not so unreasonable, is it? I mean, think about it. You don't give haloperidol to kids when they throw tantrums, so why would we give it to older adults? Bob, uh, have you been giving antipsychotics to little kids? Are you truly suggesting that you sat through Encanto in a movie theater without giving anyone a little vitamin H? Holy smokes, Bob! That's how you get the little tykes to stop talking about Bruno. <gasps> Bob, j j just look over the guide. It'll help you to avoid certain meds and do right by your patients. Now hold on just a minute, Billy. I see that SSRIs are listed here. Uh-huh. And I know that you prescribe SSRIs to some of your patients. Of course, Bob. S see? See? So does that make you a bad doctor? No, Bob. Let me explain to you how this works. Table 2 shows you some potentially inappropriate medications for older adults. Notice that you're given a rationale and a nuanced recommendation of why and when you shouldn't be using these meds. There will still be some circumstances in which you prescribe these, but it shouldn't be most of the time. Table 3 gives you some recommendations regarding specific illnesses or syndromes like heart failure or delirium in which it may be inappropriate to use certain medications. Table 4 is kind of like Table 2, but it just says that you should be cautious about some of these meds. You know, keep them on a short leash. Table 5 lists a bunch of notable drug-drug interactions. Table 6 lists a bunch of meds that can cause drama with reduced renal function. Table 7 lists a bunch of notable meds with anticholinergic properties. These often cause side effects, so, you know, if you're reaching for an antidepressant, don't start with paroxetine. And tables 8, 9, and 10 are for all you people out there who are familiar with the previous edition of the Beers Carteria and just need to know what's changed between now and the last version. Billy, what's going on here? Who are you talking to? Oh, uh, um, no one. Never mind. So, ultimately, you'll always need to apply your clinical judgment regarding whether something is appropriate. Billy, this is so long and complicated. How am I supposed to memorize all this? Practice, Bob. Just like everything else. You keep an eye out for dangerous meds and combos in your patient visits, and you'll get the hang of this in no time. <sighs> Billy, it's just that, well, I know that I'm a good doctor. I've been practicing the same high-quality medicine that I always have for the past 70 million years. Uh, Bob, th that's not necessarily a... Well, I know what you're getting at. And now all these suits and sycophants are trying to destroy my legacy. My practice has saved countless lives. Am I to believe that I've been doing a bad job all this time? No, Bob, the Beers Criteria isn't an indictment against you. It's not about you at all. Medicine evolves over time. We all need to strive to improve, which is why we're all lifelong learners. The Beers Criteria isn't about good physicians or bad physicians. It's about being deliberate and intentional about the care that we give to some of our frailest patients. Well, Billy, for what it's worth, thank you. Your devotion to improving the care of your patients is... laudable. Ah, don't mention it, Bob. I'm just glad that I can tell Carol that we had this talk. <laughs> you know, she was actually a little concerned that maybe you hadn't graduated from med school or something crazy like that. Can you imagine? Darn it, I told that to her in confidence. 